Title O Basics, Physics, Complex Holes and Dynamics Tutorial. Enjoy. Uh, physics by uh, NVIDIA and its implementation in Tyflo. Uh, what it does is kind of calculate, you know, physics between um, components in 3ds Max and uh, allows you to do cool animations like this. I think the goal for this tutorial would be to show you not how to copy what I'm doing but to be able to create any kind of physics animation you can imagine. Now this is a fairly simple setup. I, I haven't really done much and I've created this uh, box here uh, with a few cylinders to make it look like a handrail and just created two balls and then the textures to match. Now I like to put the checker pattern on things that roll A so my eyes can tell whether or not the roll appears appropriate for the movement of the ball you know so you can actually see if it's spinning rolling relative to contact with the surface and you know physics has a few quirks and idiosyncrasies they uh, really you know, not every, every time stuff happens that you expect to happen in the way you expect it to happen, but uh, we'll go over a few things. Uh, the most important is how to make perfect hulls. Now, hull is the physics kind of detection, um, I don't know what you want to call it, envelope, uh, and it, that's actually what determines when contact is made between two objects and what should happen. An interesting thing about this particular animation is the two balls are dynamic objects and this platform is actually a mesh hull which makes it a kinematic object but I wanted to point out that you can make a kinematic object interact with a dynamic object uh, because there's an option in um, TIEFLOW when we look at this platform here in the physics shape, and I just bring this over here, uh, you can see that I've said he here, inherit position and inherit rotation under the berth for the platform. So now, before I went and animated this, I actually went and keyframed a few movements for my platform. I just kind of jiggled in different angles and now when TIEFLOW um, updates uh, this platform it actually looks at the uh, position of the original object and the rotation and that makes it actually pretty cool because generally you wouldn't use kinematic objects to drive an animation um, but because of that feature you can do really cool stuff like that and you can actually have complex mesh shapes interact with dynamic objects. We'll go into all this in a second. We need to revisit uh, the hull, the physics hull. That's the shrink wrap shape that encases whatever object you're going to make a physics shape and that's what's used by physics to detect collisions. So I've created this kind of crossy shape and the point being here that most of the holes that are going to try to fit this shape aren't going to do the job we need it to do, especially if we wanted animations or detections to come right in the corners here. So let's display the hole and you can see this kind of lines here that represent the shrink wrap. Now it might be hard to visualize that this is a flat surface here and that any object trying to reach the center isn't going to be able to get there. So let's um, visualize it a bit better. You can see this diamond shape. This is actually the shape that physics is going to use to detect whether or not something hits this cross. Now we can see that's not very good, right? Because there's lots of space here where something should be able to go right in. So what options do we have? Holes are important. They're really important for good physics animation, right? The only choices that we have are convex is going to not work and obviously the box and the sphere aren't going to work 
Mesh is going to curve us a perfect hole. The mesh is always, the mesh hole is always exactly the same shape as whatever mesh you have. Even something 5, 10, 20 times more complex than this, it'll be exactly the same as the shape. And it would be awesome if life was that easy and that's what we could choose for all our holes, right? But mesh objects are not uh, dynamic objects in tie flow. They can't be animated that way. Uh, by tie flow, they're like a static uh, object in place, kinematic object. So how do we get a similar hole? but we can use in dynamic animations. Well, we only have one choice here and it's compound. By default, this is set to 12.5 and voxels. We talked about voxels trying to fill the shape in here and approximate the shape as best as it can using voxels. Let's say do 0.5 here. Let's hide my cross for a minute and you can see what the voxels are trying to do. The voxels are trying to recreate the shape as best as it can. You play around with all these settings and you get the best result. Now that kind of works pretty good. But in my previous testing where I did the chain animation, um, once you start, say, getting 50, 60 links, then the voxels don't spread properly over the links. Uh, they don't always exactly follow the shape. It seems to be... Uh, very finicky and even when you animate that chain uh, it can be very finicky there is a better way and it's one of the things I discovered recently right and that's actually to break your shape into elements so if we go in here you'll see that compound from elements convex holes right so because I've pretty well got primitive shapes here I've just got three cylinders that have been beveled to create points. From a shrink wrap perspective, if you took any one of those uh, three pointy cylinders and shrink wrap just one of them, the shrink wrap would be perfect in this case, right? So what I did was I created one cylinder with pointy ends. I cloned it, turned it, cloned it, turned it, and then you have to turn them into polygons so you can attach them and become a single object but made of multiple elements. And that is the important point here. We will cover this in more detail because we'll make some chains and we'll see how this really matters. But once you understand this concept of the whole importance, then you can really create any kind of complex physics animation you want. So the reason we got this... Uh, perfect fit as if it was the mesh selection is because I broke down my shape into primitive kind of shapes that would be shrink wrapped perfectly and now we have a really accurate dynamic object where things can come right in the corners here and be detected and that's really what we want from any object we create. So one of the most important things I can tell you right now is understand how to break your models down into shapes that can be shrink wrapped. And we'll do one or two examples. And once you do that, you're gonna get pretty amazing, cool physics uh, animations and collisions and they're all gonna look awesome. Let's move on. Just to close out this section on the importance of hulls, uh, we'll do a proof of uh, concept that if our hull is perfect, if it falls down and goes into this ring, it should rest on these two things and this pointy bit should penetrate through. And we can test that pretty easily just by berthing an object, uh, picking our ring. Uh, let's turn it into a kinematic object uh, give it the physics shape, uh, mesh. So now we've got a perfect fitting hole uh, for this ring and it's going to be a kinematic object. When we do the animation, we can see that our cross falls, rests on the two arms perfectly and the point penetrates. Um, that's all we'll cover for now right now on this uh, hole until we get to making chains and buckets of more complex shapes but 
once you get all this, man, you can do anything. Let's create this uh, simple tipping bin. I've just this, got this graphic up here showing the approximation of the size and the idea I want. Uh, this bin is going to be dynamic, this stand is going to be kinematic, and uh, the bin should tip on its own based on these two pins right here that we'll end up putting in. So that's roughly what we're going to design, and this is the rough sizing, which is about the right size for an actual tip bin. I've gone and pre-made the uh, basic bin shape uh, so you didn't have to sit here and watch me do that all right it's just primitives extruded and now we need to convert these into polys remember we're trying to make a complex shape out of multiple elements that can all be shrink wrapped to perfection so first thing we need to do is convert this to poly so we can attach them to make one model uh, so we select all of these Uh, convert to edible poly. All right, pick one. Just pick this one. And now we go and ahead, ahead and attach all of the items. And now we should have a single model. If I try to move that model, we should have all the elements. Yep, there it goes. All right. So. Uh, now we go into tie flow and we're going to turn that into a dynamic object. Perf objects. I pick the bin. Um, turn it into a physics shape. Now because we've done it all out of elements that can be shrink wrapped to perfection, we go into the compound and we select from elements, convex holes, and if we turn on the display hole, we should see a perfect um, hole. Let me just turn off the original bin. And it looks like tie flow is in there. All right, now we're good. So there's our tie flow bin. And if we look around, it's not perfectly clear that this is a good bin because we can't really tell if there's a shrink wrap kind of covering the top but we'll just test that in a minute but hopefully if we play the animation it should be front heavy and already tip forward and land on the front right there you go so there's the beginning of, of the tip bin uh, so let's add a ball or sphere to the, the scene and to test our hole is exactly what we want and that everything we did is correct. I've just made a sphere of 11.3 centimeters. Uh, so let's birth an object, uh, rename it to ball, add the sphere, turn it into a physics shape. By default, it's convex, and when we display the hole, it's fine. But I like to use a sphere for a sphere if there is possible, and use the exact shape. Uh, if we tested our animation now, uh, the bin will start tipping before the ball falls. It might still be okay. Yeah, it is. All right, but we've already got something cool going on here. All right, just to stop the uh, bin from tipping earlier right now, we'll just say set it to uh, five frames. Let's see what happens there. And yeah, all right. So you can see our hull is good. And we got two dynamic objects colliding and intersecting, interacting with each other. Um, I hope this really helps reinforce the importance of how you model or how you break it into elements so you can get perfect physics stuff. We will reinforce it even more when we build a couple of chains. Uh, let's turn off tie flow for a minute and um, we'll lift the bin. I'll do all this while I'm gone, I'll be right back. I'll lift this bin up a little bit so we have room for a stand underneath, right? And I'll lift the ball. I'll be right back after I've constructed the elements for the bin. There's no need for you to watch me do that. 
All right, we're back and I've modeled the base. Let's hide this bin for a minute so we can look at the base. All right, and I've put an angle front here so the bin can come right down at the steepest angle. I've already made uh, the eyelets or the things that are gonna hold the pins for the bin to tip. And this was for a latch that might come on the back later and the legs just to lift it off the ground at the right height. So because this is gonna be a kinematic object, this base will use the mesh hull. And the mesh hull is going to be a perfect um, replication or shrink wrap of the mesh itself. So the holes will be where the holes are and they'll be exact. So everything will be exact by using the mesh hull. But remember, Typhro treats mesh holes as kinematic static objects. But in this case, we do want the base to be static, non-animated object. So it's actually quite simple to turn this into a uh, Typhro object. We go back in, we can uh, birth objects. Uh, pick the base, All right. uh, turn it into a physics shape. In this case, it's going to be a mesh. And right now, there's really nothing more that we need to have turned that base into um, a kinematic object. If we turn on tie flow and we come here and we just see the hole, you can see the hole is pretty well perfect. All right, but you can see now uh, the bin isn't actually swinging on pins because we haven't inserted any yet, right? And But it is colliding with the base, and now it's tipping from a higher point. So let's add the pins. So let's go ahead and add these pivot pins. Now you're going to have intersecting uh, physics objects, right? The pins are going to protrude into and through these um, holders that I've made, right? The pivot points. And when you do that, I found that it's best to have the pins on your dynamic object and the holes on your static or kinematic object. So let's just go ahead and create a couple of pins. All right, so we just do two cylinders. They should just be slightly smaller than the original, not, you know, crazy smaller because then you're going to get a lot of movement. And we'll just make them about 10 centimeters high and we'll move them in, want them into position here. And just so you can see, that's roughly not bad sizing, right? We'll come down here, roughly center it perfectly. We can go a bit tighter than that. So we go in here and just modify our diameter until we got fairly tight, oops. Until we got a fairly tight fit like that. I'll be right back, I'm gonna line the pins up and everything and put them on both sides. All right, I've placed the two pins perfectly and now our complex bin or whatever physics shape is going to get even more complex, right? Which could mess up our shrink wrapping. But this is where, when you make it out of the elements that can all be shrink wrapped individually, uh, everything should be awesome. So if we pick our bin and we go back into the poly and attach the two pins. So now they're gonna become part of that bin, right? Now, you would think that could possibly mesh up mess up your your shrink wrap but think about the two cylinders if you shrink wrap them individually for your hole they're going to be a perfect shrink wrap because it's a basic primitive so our bin should still uh, behave perfectly when we go back into tie flow even though we modified it and what could happen occasionally when you have intersecting physics objects is you could get a motion explosion when you turn it on because you know you've got one uh, item that's penetrating through another item and we've left enough clearance that this shouldn't be a problem uh, but there is an option in TIE flow where you can uh, 
ticking options that say ignore initial or starting penetrations but we should be good let's go back into well let's hide this this stuff for a minute hide the bin and go into tie flow turn tie flow back on and if we would have had a motion explosion you would have seen uh, the bin or whatever try to jump out of the stand and it didn't do that so we uh, should be uh, good right now and let's also hide the uh, the stand, the base. All right, and let's take a look here and do our animation. And you can see that it's actually, if you notice up here, you can see that the weight of the bin has slid down and it's now rotating inside of the holder. And you can see that the bin is now pivoting on these two pins. Now, isn't that cool? So, you can see that really with what I've shown you it shouldn't be too hard to say go ahead and so kind of design and add a latch on the back you would add another pin on the bottom of the bin and then make your latch to work and now it actually latch in place but uh, let's leave this project where it is because I think what was important was what do you do with penetrating objects how do you make your complex shapes out of elements that can all be shrink wrapped perfectly and uh, I think this is a great starting point uh, for opening your imagination to to making anything you can think of all right so let's have a look at making a chain animation I've actually based uh, these uh, sizes on a real kind of chain so it's four centimeters long 2.4 centimeters wide and it has a corner radius of one centimeter and it's uh, 0.8 centimeter in diameter here all right and uh, so basically I just created that using a simple rectangle spline and if we disable that you can see I just drew a rectangle with the radius corner and then for now we've just enabled this 0.8 centimeter extrusion in the viewport so how would we break down this chain for perfect physics animation? Well, we have to think about shrink wrapped elements now. If we shrink wrap this as a whole, it's no good. So what I'm going to do for accuracy is I'm gonna break my chain down into 16 sections. And let me just activate my drawing program here, layer two, and you can see here that I'm going to break it down across those lines, right? And we are written here 1 to 16. Now, why am I breaking down the corner? Because if we just left this corner as one section and we shrink wrapped it, the way the shrink wrap is going to cut across is like this, right? Which, depending on how close you're going to go in and animate on your chain, might be acceptable. But if you're going to do close-ups, you'll see that two chain links will never touch in the corner. If you want the chain links to come in and touch in the corner and resources like memory and computations and all that aren't a problem, then a better way would be every three links so that essentially you get that kind of shrink wrap now, right? And that's going to produce a much better uh, physics animation. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's break this down into some elements. So the first thing we need to do is select our spline link and convert it into an editable poly. All right, convert to editable poly. There we go. Now we're going to go down here and we're going to, uh, sorry, polygons. And we'll go down here so we can detach. All right. All right, detach, all right? So let's select the uh, the symbol, the straight ones first. All right, and uh, detach. And don't worry about the naming right now. And then we're going to do the same thing for our corners. Remember, we're gonna break them into three. So this is our sets of three. 
detach. And then we'll keep doing that until we've done the whole thing. Detach. I'll just do this right hand corner here and then I'll exit and come back with it completed and detach and then we're going to do this little straight section uh, detach so I've broken I've detached my 15 elements I'm only left with this white corner here which we the 16th so now that we've broken it down into 16 elements we need to reattach them right so now we go in and uh, click attach and this is the one that's already part of it so now see you'll see my elements as we go you see how I'm adding all those back in so we'll do that until we've done all 16 elements right now our chain is complete unclick attach and now if we go in and you see we have one chain link and that is now ready and if we click on elements you can see how I've broken mine down into the individual elements so that is a single chain link that's now perfect for physics animation so now our next job is to uh, clone this and make a chain section let's go ahead and do that all right we're just going to do 12 links initially for uh, the purposes of this tutorial right so I'm going to click on my rotation snap, angle snap, and I'm going to rotate this link 90 degrees and clone it. And I'm going to make it an instance, right? Now I'm going to move it into position. And I'm going to try and visualize fairly close, right? Uh, without penetrating the other. So you can see that's not too bad. This circular part here is not touching this round part, right? So there's two chains, two chain links in the set, right? And we move this over here. Now we're going to clone those two and make 12 links. Oops. Get rid of that and turn normal back. All right, so we grab these two. I'm going to hold down the shift key, so I'm cloning. And I'm going to bring it over reasonably accurate. See, there's the edge right there. Just bring it back a little bit. And that's probably a good place to clone it. And I'm going to do uh, six. So we get 12 links, right? And if we zoom that, oops. There you can see, uh, there's our 12 links. And they should all be perfect and ready for tie flow. I'll be right back, all set up for tie flow. Alright, so I've just repositioned the chain to be a little bit off the ground. I've also created a cylinder we're going to use for a collider to test our chain animation against. And I've created an empty tie flow object. So to turn this chain into a physics shape, first thing we do is select all the links. We go in and create a birth object and we add selected so now our 12 links have become a um, tie flow object if we slide the animation controller nothing happens because all we've done is birth a static object now let's turn it into a physics shape all right now it's a physics shape the first thing you notice in this top window here and if we just slide the slider down so it separates, you can see that all 12 links exploded them and, and blew apart. That's what we call a motion explosion. And it's because you've got penetrating physics objects and a hole that is actually closed. In other words, there is no hole in the middle. This shrink wrap item is using the convex hole mode, which means that the shrink wrap is actually going over and blocking the hole. So now you can see what a motion explosion looks like. Let's fix that because we did create our chain links uh, properly, which was to break them into small elements. So we want the compound object and we don't want it from voxels. Even though we could do this from voxels, 
in the long term it's going to be easier to do it from elements like I've shown you because the voxels are eventually not going to work for you and it's going to be so finicky trying to create any kind of uh, animation especially if you're going to say have 36 or 40 links right so let's select from elements that's how we created our chain now you can see that the chain went back together and it will actually animate it'll fall it's not going to hit our pin because we haven't made our collider object here a physics shape so let's do that rename this to chain uh, earth objects and we're going to pick our collider and we're going to rename this collider all right and we're going to turn that into a physics shape and it's going to be a mesh hole because a we want it to be kinematic non-animated and non-moving and it'll stay in place but it'll interact perfectly with our dynamic chain now when we animate you'll see we go down and the chain hits uh, the collider and it immediately breaks and maybe your first response is I oh, know what's wrong is our design wrong no our design is fine this is actually perfect uh, tie flow troubleshooting if we select our tie flow um, icon and go in here where it says time step one frame well one frame isn't enough to calculate the uh, physics stuff that's going on so let's try a uh, quarter frame and see what happens and it looks pretty good all right and sometimes you know i'll just zoom this out here and you can see how it looks when we play it hey we've got our chain and everything is awesome right uh, there's some movement and stuff going on which we will fix with gravity and settings and maybe dampen but right now we've got a perfect working chain and uh, if we switch this to perspective for a minute and rotate this a little bit and go into the fault shading and now zoom right in you'll see that there's no penetration in our links right and that they're laying perfectly against each other so now you can see the benefit of uh, where we took a single chain and broke it into 16 elements now here's the really cool part if you tried to do this with voxels and you want to extend this chain and you want to drag it around and all sorts of stuff this is when you're going to run in with just time consuming changes with voxels whereas creating it by elements like we did we should be able to take this chain and double its length let's try that and see what happens okay let's uh, double the length here so we've turned off tie play for a second we're just going to select our 12 links shrink this out of the way maximize our window and move these 12 links and have that one being approximately in the right place where it's going to intersect right we're just going to make all these instances of the original links so now we've doubled the links in max we need to now double them in tie flow so we go in here to our chain and we've got the first 12 there we're going to add the next ones now if everything is good design and we've made good holes it's going to animate perfectly right away if this was done with the voxel thing you're going to have to go back in mess with all the voxels all sorts of things until you get them right but let's see whether or not i'm going to eat my words we turn on tie flow and let's go back to our window here and animate and we can see that everything looked good right the chain didn't break because we added more links uh, because it's offset from the cylinder it's actually hitting the cylinder on the end of the chain and 
starting to wrap around and now it's going to release itself and end up landing on the ground right over here and maybe if we zoom our camera out a little bit here we can possibly see the chain laying on the ground there it is right so if we play our animation go back to the beginning we've got too many there you go all right so the main point here being that you know we can find all tune all this the way we want now uh, for this instance if we maybe want to just make this more central to see what happens we move this chain more over the center right now so it'll dangle on the collider watch what happens now when we play it all right so there you go there's the beginnings of how to make chains this particular design that we've done here would also work for you putting some hooks into a wall and then having the chain hang and dangle right um i think this kind of should get you started on how to make complex dynamic shapes and complex physics animations uh, we need to go over a few of the settings go put them in a separate video um, before we go on this video i'll show you how we'll how we would do the same kind of construction method for our um, polygons to create like a complex uh, bicycle chain and it'll just let you see how complex you can get and everything still work in physx in TIFLO. Uh, so before we leave this tutorial and I'll be back with a part two with different settings and tweaking and stuff let's have a look at a complex bike chain and we've uh, and what makes this more complex than others is for one link animation we actually have the pin penetrating through the bearing penetrating through four plates so it's dynamic on dynamic animation as well as having a lot of penetration so in this exploded view here at the bottom right we can see what makes a beginning of a bike chain right so you have the bearing you have a pin you have two outer plates and two inner plates and that makes one starting link set up like this up here uh, if we look at it more together with a couple of links you can see how the design works as it's going together and um, in part two we'll maybe touch on this a little bit more but let's just have a look at how I constructed each of the holes for each of these elements again you can try to do it whichever way you think would work better and ultimately how you design your stuff is up to you now in an animation like this with complex objects like we got here now the voxel thing is really not going to work for you it's going to be so finicky it's not funny and you're going to every time you change something you're going to have to go back and play with the voxels this is where breaking down the objects by elements is going to work much better so let's take a look at each one of them and how i did it all right so let's have a look at uh, how we did this So take the pin and go over to poly and I'll go down in the polygon, uh, sorry by element and you see we have the central cylinder and then we have two caps that are slightly big enough to stop everything from sliding off the end. Depending on how you do it maybe you know, it would be safer to make it a little bit of a uh, bigger end cylinder to really stop but other than that no problem. Uh, with the size I got. If we look at the uh, the bearing, now 
at first it might appear that this is just a cylinder with a hole in it or what you would call a tube, but that wouldn't work as far as a convex hole is concerned, right? So again, like we broke down the chain on the, uh, like a generic chain, we also have to break this into elements and you can see how I've done it, right? So this bearing is actually made up of like 16 or something like that individual elements so that when each one of them is shrink wrapped they all uh, form a perfect hole and you get a bearing with a hole in it. Now if we turn off edge faces here it might help. All right, you can at least see the breakdown. All right, you can see the breakdown of the elements. Now look how I've constructed the uh, uh, the outer links, right? Um, this one kind of threw me for a curveball at the beginning. I, I realized I needed like two tubes like here because essentially the uh, linkage is kind of like uh, this bearing, but two of them and they need to be connected somehow. So I essentially uh, made one tubey thing here on the outside that was broken down into enough elements that you know uh, when you take a straight shortcut across with your shrink wrap you you don't get a square here you get more like a circle right so that it will rotate around the uh, pins and then I basically took that left hand uh, circular element cloned it over here to the right and then I just sat down and drew some connecting uh, polygons between the two until I got what looks like a link. So you see uh, the elements here, right? There's the elements that make up a linkage. And you can see that I did what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 for, um, for the, the circular part. So I hope this kind of inspires you to think about your objects differently and then um, now you can see how you can really make complex uh, chain or any kind of animation if you just construct uh, your objects properly to work with PhysX. And I'll just show you a quick animation of how that looks. So taking that philosophy, and now we have uh, about 60 links, I think. And we actually apply it in a real life animation example. There you can see that the chain falls onto the sprocket I've created and that I can now animate the chain. So I'll come back in part two and we'll just finalize on settings, tweaks, physics stuff and we'll leave it there right now for this uh, particular tutorial. See you next time.